Hey, what's going on, everybody? Good evening. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. I hope you guys enjoyed your day. And I'm going to make sure I drop some serious heat for you guys. And apart from the heat that I'm going to drop for you guys, you guys are also, uh, you stick to the end, I'm going to drop some sauce in the end. And you're going to you're gonna be able to win a 50K challenge. So make sure you guys stick to the end. Um, let's give it two minutes so we can get some time for some people to join. Greetings, hot chocolate from Australia. All right, uh, like I said, let's give it two minutes for people to join. So the plan for the Zoom is I'm going to break down the trade from last week. I'm, we're gonna find the direction for this week. And then um, we'll see like what's the most requested pair from you guys. And we can break that pair down and see what we could expect for this week. And then also I'll tell you guys how you can win the 50K challenge. Okay, perfect. So, all right, in one minute, we'll start. Shout out to Alex for lending us his Zoom so we could have more people in here. Is there fire, but I find another one. Damn, you guys are literally blowing me up right now asking for signals. Someone's saying that they, they're in the signals, they want to sign up for another month. Someone else is saying that it's the best thing that they've done. Like, I'm glad you guys are, but. The most important thing about the signals too is that I send you guys the analysis. Like I literally tell you why we're gonna enter. So that's the most important thing behind the signals that you guys actually see the reasoning why behind why we take the trade, where we take it from by analysis. Like I literally tell you guys everything. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's get right into it. Give two minutes for everybody. So what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna start off with this. We're gonna break down this movement right here, right? We're gonna break down this movement here. And we're gonna break down how we found direction, how, like why I sent the entry, where I sent it, just pretty much everything. So we're gonna do a top down analysis. We're gonna break it down. Uh, how I said direction, entry, all that good stuff. And then we'll break down another random pair. So let's do this. Let's uh, make sure I'm recording. Or recording, okay, perfect. So let's replay this. We're gonna replay this right until eight, more or less like 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning. That's when we come to trade. Uh, sit down to trade so like right here all right let me go to h4 so i can show you guys something so let me admit everybody okay so check this out guys so pretty much what i want to break down here is i want to show you guys how i find literally how i find direction with just market like just looking at the candlesticks from the market i don't we don't look at anything else i don't like um, we're pretty much just using the candlesticks to tell us and identify the major areas in the market and where we could possibly go. So pretty much this day, what we're presented presented with is this, how I told you guys, we're coming off of this daily supply right here. So if we just go to the daily real quick, I wanna, I wanna break this down. Notice how we have this bearish push to the downside, right? This this supply is coming from, honestly, from like, uh, I don't know the exact date because it's not showing on the bottom, but this is months ago. This is a long time ago. And but notice how this push, this previous contrary candle, created this push to the downside, right? So this is our area of supply, and we're gonna mark it like this. Let me get this out of the way. And move this like that. So we're gonna mark it like this. This is our area of supply. Right? This previous contrary candle that gives us a push to the downside. So now we're working with this area, right? Notice how price touched this area here, and we have to identify how I told you guys where could price pull back to. So we need to identify a high probability area of demand that created the push that that's where price is going to pull back to because price likes to fill voids. So price will give a big, like a big movement and price will fill the void to continue the move. Does that make sense? Same thing here. Notice like I'll break this down when we go to H4 now, but this pullback right here was just until the previous contrary candle that created the push. This is a pullback into the create the area that created the push to continue the move. That's pretty much what we're looking for here. We have to identify an area that price could pull back into to continue the move or break. So now we have that on the daily, this area right here. Let's go to the H4. H4, I told you guys that the main target for last week, which we ended up touching just at the end of the week, was, which was a coincidence, was this area right here, this H4 demand, right? So notice this H4 demand, this previous contrary candle that gave us the push into this uh, daily supply right here, right? So we marked this like this. 
And we also had this area marked here, this previous contrary candle, this other area of demand right beneath this one right here. So I'm working like this, like that, these two areas. That's the main target for price for the end of the week. So we're looking for sales, right? And then we could also identify this area right here. Well, this area right here off of the, well, this is on the daily supply, right? But notice how off on the H4, when we touched it, we create this H4 supply right here. So this is an area to keep in mind just in the future here, this area of supply right here. So keeping this in mind, now let's go to H1. H1, and we can identify this. And we turn this on as well. We could identify this area of supply up here. So we have this void to fill, area of supply. This is a high probability area to continue the sales down to the downside here, this main target here. So let me just um, fast forward a little bit to like 8.30 so we can go exactly to what we're working with. So maybe right here, like right there. Okay, so now that we have uh, our like our higher, our what's it called, our supply and demand zones drawn on a higher time frame, daily H4, H1, and we have our direction found, now we're gonna mark our highs and lows and see what price action does in the session and how we got our entry. So let me go to M5. I always mark my highs and lows on the M5 timeframe. It is the most precise timeframe to mark them on. Um, if you guys back test this and you guys seen the YouTube videos, you guys see how precise these highs and lows of days are when they're drawn correctly. It's very repetitive, but it's literally what works. So if we're trading here, right, this was on Thursday, the high and low of day is gonna be coming from Wednesday, right? So. Someone asked what pairs this is. This is your USD. So the high and low of day is going to be coming from Wednesday if we're trading Thursday. It's going to be the highest and lowest point between Frankfurt and New York session. So we just mark this real quick. High of day. And then we're going to mark the low of day right here, which is the lowest point. I notice how I'm not marking this. Oh, shit. There we go. Let me put this like that. Notice how I'm not marking this area here, right? It, although it's the lowest point in the actual day, it's not in a session. So the rule is that one of the key rules is that it has to be inside a session. So this is not valid down here. So we have our lows and highs drawn. Now let's just draw our previous high and previous low of day, which is gonna come from two previous trading days before. So if we're trading on Thursday, the high and low of day is coming from Wednesday and the previous high and previous low of day is gonna be coming from Tuesday, which is two previous trading days. So. Someone said, hot chocolate said the high and lows of days are bloody gold. I promise you, they literally are. Like this is accurate shit right here, guys. When you see a high and low of day in confluence with like a high probability area supplier demand, it's golden, like some, some real shit right here. So this is the previous low of day right here. And then notice just from marking this area here, you can see how price pretty much this reaction right here. This was probably news, but notice how it's coming off of this previous low of day. Like these areas are very specific areas you'll see price react off of these areas. This is the previous high of day right here. Notice how price just respects these areas. Uh, someone said, can you show the settings of the indicator of time zones? Yeah, let me just throw this up real quick so you guys can take a picture. So this is the, the settings right here. It's called CM time-based lines. This is the name right here. And then this is the main settings that you want right here. So just take a picture of this. We're good. Okay, so now that we got that, um, okay, so let's go to the actual price action. That's what we're working with. Okay, let me let everybody in. Okay, so one second, I see the inputs. Again. Let me just throw them back real quick. One second. All right, these are the inputs right here. These are the main things that you gotta change. Okay, so let's get into this. So when I come to sit down and I send my analysis, obviously with the main thing that I see here, guys, the most important thing is this void here to fill, right? This void. And notice how on H1, we have this area supply. M15, we have this area supply here in Confluence. And it, it, this would be a high probability area for price to continue to sell from. But what's not high probability is for price to pull back in this session and continue the sales. Like we're not going to see price pull back 60 pips to then move a like 100 pips from this zone. Does, does that make sense? So 
this is an area that price is probably going to react off of in the future. Like this is a very likely area we'll get a reaction off of when price uh, touches it in the future because it created this push and we have this void. So it's an area to keep in mind for the session if it touches it in the session, but it's not high probability that it's going to touch in the session because it's just so far away. If that makes sense, like price gave a, a 60 pip, like an 80 pip move, price isn't going to pull back 70 pips to then continue the move, if that makes sense. It could, but it's not very likely. Um, okay, so let's fast forward here and see exactly where we took this from. So when price gives this movement right here, this right here, as soon as price gave this movement off this previous low of day, notice how we create this area of supply right here on M15, right? M15 off of this previous low of day, low of day. So price already pulls back into the low of day, the previous low of day. And then we give this movement to the downside. This is our main target down here. And then if we go to M5, notice how it's in confluence, right? So M5, M15 right here. So M15 supply, M5 supply. Pay attention guys, this is the, the sauce right here. When you guys ask me, oh, what's the entry confirmation? This is my entry confirmation right here. So this is like a super, um, high probability trade. Why? Because we're coming off of the previous low of day, the low of day, we have the M5 in confluence with the M15, right? We have the M15, the M5, the previous low of day, the low of day, a strong push to the downside. And if I go to M1, there's probably an M1 supply as well. So literally look at the M1 right here. The M1 is right in confluence with this previous low of day as well. So we got M1, M5, M15, these three time frames in confluence. So as soon as this happened, I sent the sell limit right here. I'm not gonna lie, I sent the sell limit at 935. I didn't send it, I mean at 345, I didn't send it at 308. So it looked like this, like that. Look at it right here, nine, uh, three, four, five with a 10 pip stop loss. So it was like this, like that. Like that, the trade looked like this. Like this. And then I actually got asked by one of you guys. Oh, uh, well, not by one of you guys. A lot of you guys were asking me, dude, how come you didn't like take a trade from uh, the supply created here or on M1? I think there was another area. Yeah. So like an area created here. And the thing is that first of all, the, the, the highest probability area would be this area up here, which created the push right from uh, pretty much from Frankfurt. But in our session, this area created the push. So the, the two high probability areas would be this area here, which the, pu the push was created, or the pullback, and then this push was created off of the lows of day, and the previous low of day and the low of day. Does that make sense? Like this area here is not high probability because that's not where the, the move comes from. That's not where the, the push came from. Does, does that make sense, guys? Are you guys flowing so far with what I'm saying, uh, or am I talking a little fast? Like, like throw a, a thumbs up if we're good. We're good, guys. Okay, perfect, perfect. All right, fire. Let me just change. Everyone's saying good. There's someone that said hella fast. All right, I'll, I'll try to um, slow it down a little bit because when I get in the zone, I start flowing and I speak a little fast. But I'm dropping heat for you guys. I promise you, what I just told you right now about the entry confirmations, the M5, the M15, and the M1, that is sauce, guys. I promise you, on the highs and lows of days, like. I'm literally giving you guys everything that I use. Like I can't do anything more. I promise you, like this shit works. You just have to back test this shit. And uh, it's not just for your USD and it's not just for New York. Like the way the, the, the highs and lows of days goes in confluence, like with any pair, any session, like it's not just limited to one, one pair, if that makes sense. Okay, so let's continue. Let's fast forward this. So, um, Right. Okay. So notice this, right? Notice how price does kind of like we, we react here. We have a pullback, but this, the pullback, that real pullback is into this area right here of supply. Now, me personally, and I told everyone in the signal group as well that I don't like, I don't have my sell limits. If the trade doesn't hit by 11, I take it out. Like I don't uh, take a trade during like past my hours. Like I literally sit down at 8 30 in the morning and I analyze from 8 to 11 and I'll take a trade from like this time frame, if that makes sense. I'm very disciplined with that. So I deleted my sell limit. Other people were able to like monetize off this trade because the trade literally played out from the sell limit, but you're gonna see how it plays out from um, London. So check this out. This is the key right here. So notice this. 
let me actually fast forward on a higher time frame. This is going to take some time. So notice how price is just giving this, that we're stuck in this range, right? We're stuck in this void right here that created the push to the downside. Now watch what happens when London comes. Boom, right there. Right here. 945. Notice how, okay, let me pause this. Notice how London pretty much pulls back exactly to this area right here. The settlement was sent at three, at nine, uh, I mean, at, yeah, nine, three, four, five. So it, the M5 supply, and notice how London pretty much taps this area exactly. Like I can't make this shit up. I don't like to say trading with the banks because I don't, I don't, I don't say that. But you could see how pretty much. I mean, if this isn't trading with the banks, I don't know what is because imagine that the we're, we know where the, we have our entry hours before price hits it, and then a, a session, a major session, pulls back into it to the pip, and then that's where the the distribution continues. The main, the main target right here, which is the H4 demand that created the push into the daily supply. Does that make sense, guys? So we have our daily supply. This whole movement was just a pullback into the area that created the push. That, that makes sense? So now um, that trade makes sense. Okay, so let's break down what we could work and what we could see for this week, because this was obviously the objective for, for last week, right? Our objective was the pullback, the sells. We were taking sells into this area. So now let's delete this and let's see what the hell we're working with. So now we're, we're literally in this area here, right? So I'm going to just delete this. I'll delete all this crap. And the only thing I'm going to leave marked is this daily supply that we're coming off of. This daily supply right here. That gave us a push to the downside. You can see how, notice how I'm telling you guys, this takes time to play out because obviously we're using a supply from a long time ago. But notice how precise these areas are. Like it literally wicks these areas and that's where the move comes in. It doesn't matter if it's the daily, the H4, like notice how precise these areas are. So notice how we touch this area in the daily. And then yes, we're having the pullback into this H4 demand. Now, based off of how we're reacting off of it here, I don't think that we're going to uh, continue the bullish move from this area. I do think that the next target for price for maybe even tonight or the next few days is going to be this area here, which is the actual, um, the next major area of demand. So if we just break this down, other, okay, so I'm going to just break down my chart, how I'm going to leave it for tomorrow when I come to trade. I'll leave it exactly how I'm going to trade. I mean, exactly how I'm going to leave it. I don't know if... I didn't even speak in English right now. I said, I'm going to leave it exactly how I'm going to trade tomorrow. Better said. All right. So let's do this. Let me let everybody else in. So let's turn on our session based indicators. And we're just going to mark our highs and lows of days real quick. And we could identify where price could continue from. And then after this, I'll break down another pair for you guys. So, um, okay. So, yeah. Let me mark the highs and lows real quick. So we're going to be trading on Sunday night slash Monday morning, right? So our high and low of day is going to be coming from one previous trading day, which is going to be Friday. So this is the low of day right here. Low of day, and then we'll do the high of day up here, right? So we'll do our high of day up here. Our high of day. And then now we'll just mark our previous high and our previous low of day, which is going to be two previous trading days from uh, the current day that we're trading. So if we're trading, like I said, Monday night, I mean, Monday morning slash Sunday night, two previous trading days is gonna be Thursday's price. This area right here. Previous high of day. They said, I, I challenge each and every one of you, I promise you, mark your highs and lows how, I, how I, I'm telling you right now, you use the session-based indicators with the settings I'm giving you guys, and you're gonna see that whatever pair you trade, you're gonna see how price reacts off these areas. You just have to, um, Obviously, identify like the direction, and you want to identify high probability areas of supply and demand to take trades from. But these highs and lows of days could really help out your trading. Trust me, I see the testimonials from you guys that use them, and I use them myself. I've I've been using them. I haven't changed these settings for about over like two years, and this the stuff works. So we have our highs and lows marked. Uh, we have our made our next major target, which is this area right here this area here. Um, so what we could see, what we might see price do is pull back 
to continue the move to the downside. I do think this is the key right here. So I do think uh, price is going to make its way down here. And I'll tell you why. Notice how we have these equal lows here, right? We have these equal lows right here. This equal low, this equal low right here. Whenever you see equal highs or equal lows, price will always take them out. So price will do this. For example, we'll have equal highs, price will manipulate above the equal highs, and then the move will come in, price will pull back to the previous contrary candle to continue the move. So this right here, very unlikely, and this is just that backwards, so it's something like this. Uh, let me mark this like that. All right, I kind of fucked up here, like that. Meaning we have equal lows, price manipulates above, below, and then we'll get the movement. So this here, like we know this is not a solid area of demand. Price is gonna break past this. We have our, our, our target down here. So it's very, very likely we might see price do something like this. And I'll mark this here on H1, this supplier here. This is a very, very likely um, setup for your USD for tonight, uh, like the next, 24 to 48 hours because price might just get stuck here we might not get any volume and then tomorrow maybe the volume will come will come in but this is high high probability stuff for your usd now obviously you're not just going to enter and place a solemn here you're going to want price to touch this in your session either if it's london or new york and then you just want a smaller uh lower time frame confirmation at this area to take the sales but does this make sense does everyone see how we're saying how price could pull back into this area of high probability h1 supply that created this push we're going to take out these equal lows and we're going to head to this H4 demand right here. Everyone sees that, right? H4 demand, equal lows on H1, pull back into this area. Okay, fire, fire. Um, okay, so that's for this pair. Now, real quick, what, what do you guys want me to break down right now? Um, you guys can tell me any pair. Let me just, okay, while well, you guys write that, let me show you the settings. You guys are asking for the settings. These are the settings right here. So let me read the comments real quick. All right, we'll go with gold. A lot of you guys are asking for gold. So we're all good with uh, your USD. So now let's go to gold. No, I don't. Someone asked, do you even trade gold, bro? No, I don't trade gold myself, but doesn't mean that we can't analyze it, though. This is the the strategy works for every single pair. Okay, so. I have something here, but I'm going to delete this and I'll analyze it from scratch. Go notice how we're reacting off these areas that I have marked. I don't know what the hell I have marked, but just know the area that I have marked up here. Notice how price reacted off this area. Perfect. We're getting this pullback, but we'll see what I have marked right now. So let me just delete this. So same thing. Let's just do a top down analysis and we'll see what the heck we're working with on gold. So um, let's do this. We'll start same thing. Weekly, daily, H4, H1. And we'll see what we could expect off gold. Now, right off the bat, what I do see is that we have this huge push to the upside, right? Very like before I even start breaking this down, I, I can identify that we need a pullback, a pullback to fill this void right here that created the push. Notice how whenever you get a, pull, a big push, price will give a pullback, right? Big push. We kind of need a pullback and we have this void to fill. So right off the bat, what catches my eye is this area of demand, right? This area of demand right here that created the push. This area on the weekly notice this previous contrary candle that gives this push to the upside. And this is not the previous contrary candle because it is, it is touched right here, right? So what I mean is this, I don't mark this candle here because it is touched right here. This is the previous contrary candle that is not touched that gave the push. So we mark this area right here like that. And then notice how price pulls back into this area perfectly to get this push. This is a solid area of demand. I'm teaching you guys What's what I, I think is um, one of the most accurate ways to draw supply and demand. So now we have this area identified. 
we can identify this area here, right? This is another major area of demand. This one down here as well, but it, we first we need to work with price here before we could work with an area down here. So this area is a high probability area of the weekly that price is gonna pull back to because price created this push right here. Um, and then let's go to the daily. So these are the zones that we're working. I mean, on the weekly, this is what we have. Demand right here that was created. I mean, that was used. And then this area that was created here and here. Right now, we don't have no major areas of supply to mark on the weekly because this, like, this is used right here. Like we don't have, this previous contract candle was the only valid thing that we had to mark and price used it right here. So notice this previous, this supply right here, right? Notice how price used it right here. And then we broke past it. So this is not valid anymore. So let's go to the date. Um, on the daily, okay, so this is pretty good. So not pretty good, but this is in confluence is what I'm trying to say. So on the daily, notice how this previous contrary candle right here, right? This previous contrary candle right here is in confluence on the daily and weekly. So we have this high, uh, this major area of demand right here. On the week, on the daily it's right here, on the weekly it's right here. So these two time frames in confluence, price gauge is pushed to the upside. Very likely we'll see price fill this void right here and pull back into this area. Now, um, let's identify this right here. So on the daily, again, no area of supply to mark. There's no previous contrary candle to mark. This previous contrary candle right here was already used here. Oh, I told you guys, this, pre this area of supply was used here for this pullback into this area of demand. Notice how precise these areas are, guys. So now on the daily, I, I see this as well. I'm, I'm not gonna leave this mark so it's not so many areas marked, but notice this. This area of, so this is what I tell you guys, price uses these areas to just pull back into them. Notice this, we'll just story tell real quick. Notice how price pretty much uses this area of supply, right? This area of supply right here. This previous contrary candle that gave this push to the downside, price uses it to give this pullback, but this pullback is only into this area of demand that created the push. And then you can see that price pulls back and then we get this reaction to the upside. Now I know it's very nice for me to tell you this, and then you guys be like, bro, but trade this shit. Why are you just telling me this shit? Any, anyone could tell me things that happen. That's why I break down trades that I actually call. So it's not like I'm giving you a perfect scenario. But since we already broke down something that I took, I'm just breaking down something that you guys want me to break down, if that makes sense. But I just like, like, I don't like to, um, like, I don't want you guys to think like, oh, I'm just marking random shit. Like, I'm teaching you what I know and how it works. So, um, so yeah, this is these areas right here. And now let's go to H4. Okay, so on H4, um, same thing. We don't have no major areas that we're coming off of here. Now, let me go, let me do this real quick because I know that there's probably an area here. Let me go back to the data. So let me back out to right here. Let me just see on M15 what do we have here. Oh, it doesn't let me go down to 15. It doesn't let me go that back. Let me see on H1. Okay, perfect. So on H1, let me just mark this area here because notice on H1, it's very, very, uh, like this is where you need to zoom in and go break down the time frames. Notice on H1, this previous contrary candle with this void right here created this push to the downside, right? This previous contrary candle, okay, this push to the downside. We have this huge void to fill. So the price is probably reacting off this area here. So let me just mark this right here. This area of supply on H1. Notice this area of supply. That created this push. Now, if we delete this, notice how price is using this area here. It's not a coincidence. Now we're coming off of this area of supply, right? We're coming off this area of supply. Notice how price tapped it to the pip perfectly right here, and that's where price used it right here, right? Like the, the, this is what I'm telling you. You got to break down the time frames and, and just look left. And then notice how price used it here, and then now we're getting a pullback. So pretty much we're just getting a pullback off of um like this pullback. We got it off of this area, and then we broke past it. So we could delete that and then here price created a new area of supply. So we'll just work with what's current. So if you look at what's current, when price used it and gave us this pullback right here, it created this new area here, right here. How I tell you guys, previous contrary candle before the push. Let me mark this as supply like that. And then notice how price taps it to the, like perfect to the pip and we're getting this pullback. So, um, Right off the bat, we can identify this area here. So what I do see for gold very, very likely is this, guys. I'm sorry, this area supply here created on H1. 
we might see something like this. Oh, that's very ugly. Let me redo this. A pullback, right? We're going to have a pullback into an area of supply, this area here. And then we might get this reaction into this area here. This is what I see very, very likely for gold. Why do I say this? Because notice how we had this push to the upside, right? We have this void to fill. Oh, I told you guys, H4, we have this void to fill, the daily, and um, these lower areas down here. This is like, we just need a pullback. This is the first area that we're gonna pull back into. Now, if price breaks past this area, which more than likely it is gonna break past this area here, then we could identify that price could pull back into these areas down here. Because you never know what price, like you can't say 100% price is gonna do this or this. You just have to think objectively. And objectively thinking right now, is that we're having a pullback to the downside. The first target is gonna be this H1 demand that created this push. That's the first target for price, right? And we could probably continue to this target off of this high probability area of supply. So this is like the main move for gold for the next like, I guess like 24 to 72 hours. Um, and then if price were to, how I told you guys, if price were to break past this area of demand, then we would just look go on the H4 and the daily or we'll just go on the daily. So we have given you guys like an overall projection. This would be the main area of demand price could pull back into this area here. Does that make sense for you guys? Let me delete this because this was used. So for gold, pull back into this area here. If price were to break past this area, nothing is stopping price here until this area down here. Make sense? Okay, perfect, perfect. Um, okay, guys, so a lot of you guys are liking these Zooms. So I think what I'm gonna do is we'll definitely do another Zoom. I'm not, uh, maybe tomorrow or maybe on Tuesday, but we're definitely gonna do another Zoom. So uh, drop, all right, that, that pretty much wraps up the Zoom for, t oh no, I'm sorry. Let me, I, I'm here about to end the Zoom. I haven't told you guys how to win the challenge. So. So far, drop a uh, drop a comment on how was the Zoom, so I could uh like put a, put an emoji of how you feel, put put a fire, put a crab emoji, like how was the Zoom. All right, fire, fire, perfect. So, all right, this is how you guys are gonna win the fifty k challenge. So let me uh, admit these people. So the way you guys could win is this. You guys see this right here? I want you guys to take a picture of this right here. And then literally just me right here. Just take a picture of this, tag me and rock it on your story. And then one of you people, one of you guys that just tags us is going to win a 50K challenge. So literally just take a picture of me right now like this. And then just post, just tag me on your story. Tagging Rocket as well. And one of you guys is going to win a 50K challenge. There's 245 of you on here. So it's not going to be, it's very, like the chances of you winning today are a lot better than winning on a post. So you got this. Um, also, I need to announce the last four winners of the other challenges and I'll post that as well. Okay, so. Peace. I'll see you guys on the next one.